Hello, my name is Chase Beard, and I'm with the Coalition of Texans with Disabilities. And I just wanted to take a few seconds to talk to you all about DARS and the VR programs, how it's benefited myself, and over the years, the people I've gotten to work with at DARS um, to help a few others. I broke my neck 17 years ago uh, in, in a sports-related accident. And at that time, I was going into my senior year. Um, I had no idea what I was going to do at that point. From there, uh, I got involved. I got lucky enough that my parents at that time had insurance that would pay for the therapies I needed. I uh, did a week in Breckenridge Hospital, had the surgeries I needed. Then I spent three months getting the inpatient therapies, and that would be the occupational therapy, the physical therapy, learning how to get out of bed again, how to get dressed. Um, a lot of what I received there and then the next year of outpatient therapies is very similar to what the CRS program is in DARS. And I can tell you, there'd be no way I'd be working a full-time job now. There'd be no way I would have gone to school if I wouldn't have gotten those therapies. They're really the thing that keeps you going, keeps you alive, keeps you from ending up in a nursing home, which I know you guys know is not the cheapest route. It's not the healthiest route. This last year, I ran into a guy at the grocery store who came up to me and asked me, you know, what my level of injury was and you know, how was I able to do things I was doing. And come to find out, one of his close friends had been in a nursing home for the last nine months. He had broken his neck in a car wreck driving home from his second job. It was late at night. So he had been in that nursing home. He didn't know of any of the supports that were out there. He had been bounced around from different place to different place. And I'll tell you, a young person in a nursing home, it doesn't go well. And he spent his time there. He was, he was at the point of giving up, and he wasn't sure what he was going to do. And we got him back into DARS. We got him into the comprehensive rehab services. He did some time over at um, Seton, and now he's actually living on his own. He's at ACC changing up his degree. He was installing HVAC systems. Now he's looking into their green energies and starting to design solar panels. So we took someone who had nothing that was stuck in a nursing home and within a few months got him back in the community and going to school on the DARS programs. And these programs employ so many people. There's so many people who are in the VR program right now that would like to be here telling y'all this, but they're at work. So we have people that this is working for. And I'll tell you, over all the years that I've now been doing this, and I am working full time, and I am able to fund the things I can fund, you know, I am willing to pay more in taxes. If I know it's going to keep programs, to keep kids in school, to keep you know, people with disabilities back in public because it's a better investment. So when you hear everyone telling you just cut, 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 take a step back. Y'all know, y'all know the investments are there. Use the rainy day fund. Look at everything you can, and you know, keep dollars where it's at, and fully, fully fund these programs. They make a huge difference.